health correspondent Nicola Hill. So the controversy has been great. For example, in some trials, uh, there's been criticism that the amounts used in mice could be far greater than what could be safe in humans, or that some of the people who initially showed results, well, they were being treated for parasites, and maybe that's why they had worse symptoms and why they did so much better after taking ivermectin. Where, what is at the heart of this controversy? Yeah, I think you've highlighted a couple of very key issues there, Michelle. So basically, this is this is a drug that's very commonplace. It's used all over the world for various um, parasitic infections. Um, I actually spoke to Dr. Simon Clark, who's a microbiologist at Reading University, and asked him what he thought about the inclusion of this drug in the principal trial. And he laughed and said, well, you do know they put it in sheep dip. Um, but he says it's a drug that's widely used, so it shouldn't really be doing any harm if it's at the safe dosage that's used in the drugs on humans at the moment. But as you touched upon there, some of these small studies which have been done in the laboratory have used much higher doses of ivermectin. And so the European Medicines Agency, the American Medicines at the FDA in America have said that these doses could be toxic and that's why they don't recommend its use outside of clinical trials and that's very important and that's why the principal study this is a study that's been ongoing here in the UK it's included seven common drugs that are being repurposed so far and looking at them basically to try and find something that you can treat people with at home who have COVID-19 and who are at risk of ending up in hospital to prevent them going to hospital really. So that this is the latest in, in a whole string of um, med medicines that they've been looking at. And so they've got about 5,000 people here in the UK have signed up for this trial, aged between 18 to 64 with some sort of underlying um, health conditions or people who, when they get COVID-19, have real shortness of breath. So they're taking part in these trials and ivermectin is going to be included. It'll be one of the drugs that people will take, but under proper gold standard scientific uh, um, trial rather than just these small trials that have been dotted around in various countries. Right, there's such a swing in opinions in, in the U.S. At the same time, you have this journal saying this could be great. You have the U.S. body, the Food and Drug Administration, saying no, no, don't take this for COVID-19. So the right thing to do is to study it properly. Surely no one is opposing a more comprehensive study, are they? No, no. And that's why, as I said, both the FDA and the EMA have said that they don't recommend it outside of clinical trials. And that's what this... Um, principal trial is. It's, it's the, one of the gold standard ones. It's a large one and people will be monitored and basically you'll have um, a placebo group, people who have just normal treatment, then you'll have people who be given ivermectin and that's how they'll work out whether it does have any effect or not. It is being used off-label in places like Bolivia, Peru, Brazil, South Africa, places where they really haven't got anything for people who've got COVID-19 and they're desperate looking, you know, desperately looking for something. And I think it's, it's important, you touched upon the point that in many of these countries, people are, are at danger of getting something like river blindness or other parasitic infections. So they've been given ivermectin. And if they've had that and COVID-19 and seem to have got better, that's why they think the drug might have an effect. But it could be that they basically would have recovered easily from the COVID-19 anyway. So we don't know. So having this comprehensive clinical trial should help hopefully decide one way or another whether it's useful or not. I mean, think of hydroxychloroquine. Exactly. Everybody was advocating that. So then they did proper clinical trials and realized it was of no use whatsoever. Yeah, so much confusion still out there. But thank you for sorting that out for us, Nicola.